The United States has the largest fleet of aircraft carriers in the world, with 11 active nuclear aircraft carriers. But Russia only has one and is clearly not running on nuclear power. But let's look at Russia in its natural habitat. Russia has over 50 icebreakers, and they are capable of a lot more than just warming up a conversation. We are talking about the largest and the most powerful fleet of icebreakers in the world, which includes more than five nuclear-powered icebreakers and even icebreakers armed with missiles and naval guns. The United States fleet of two active icebreakers is easily dwarfed by the Russians. So what is the reason behind this huge difference in icebreaking power between these two old rivals? But we can't just jump into that conversation. First, let's break the ice. The first ship tough enough to crack through polar ice was the Yermak, built in the United Kingdom for the Imperial Russian Navy. She was commissioned in October of 1898, but first had to break through the ice to arrive in Kronstadt in March of 1899. I guess that's one way to make sure the product meets the specifications. But today's icebreakers have come a long way. The underwater inspection of these massive 16-foot diameter propellers may look like CGI as US military divers check for damages to the hull and propeller of their most powerful icebreaker, the Polar Star. The US Navy, or I should say the US Coast Guard, has two active polar-capable icebreakers the medium icebreaker Healy and the heavy icebreaker Polar Star. Healy can break ice up to 4.5 feet deep, while Polar Star can break ice up to 21 feet thick. But what are these ships doing in these hostile and hard-to-reach regions of the world? American polar icebreakers have been involved in a variety of missions. Their primary mission is the support of Operation Deep Freeze, which is a United States scientific expedition to Antarctica, and more specifically, McMurdo Station, the largest scientific base located on Ross Island. These icebreakers break through 6 to 14 foot thick fast ice, that's the ice attached to the coastline, in order to create a channel. This channel is used by a fuel tanker and a cargo ship to deliver goods to McMurdo Station, usually once a year. The scientists and other personnel who work at McMurdo fly there using military cargo aircraft that are equipped with skis. This annual fuel, food and cargo delivery to McMurdo station is critical in keeping this scientific mission alive, which is why the icebreakers play such a vital role. But in addition to opening the shipping channel, the polar icebreakers also conduct scientific experiments of their own. For example, water sampling setting current detection buoys and penguin studies. Which is interesting, because no matter what penguins are doing, whether it's singing, dozing off after their morning nap, hungover and looking for their keys in the snow, or going for a romantic walk with their girlfriend and suddenly realizing she's missing just to find out she's doing whatever this is with another penguin, when they see a giant red monster sliding toward them on ice, they get the hell out of the water and run for dear life but they do come around after for photos. Icebreakers are naturally also involved in help and rescue operations. In November of 2011, when a strong storm prevented the routine scheduled fuel delivery to the city of Nome in Alaska, polar icebreaker Healy created a channel and accompanied Russian oil tanker Renda in order to do an emergency delivery of more than 1.3 million gallons of fuel. When a ship or a boat gets stuck in the Arctic ice, who do you think they call? the Polars, who have the means and expertise to free up those vessels and save lives. But what allows icebreakers to do what all other types of ships can't? For example, Polar Star can break through ice up to 21 feet thick by repeated backing and ramming, or continuously cruise at a speed of 3 knots through 6 feet of ice. But to better understand how icebreakers can cut through thick polar ice, which at times can be as thick as a two-story building, we need to take a trip into the heart of the beast, the engine rooms. Polar Star has two independent and redundant propulsion systems, diesel electric and gas turbine. Polar Star's 18,000 horsepower diesel electric plant consists of six large diesel engines which generate electrical power that feeds three 6,000 horsepower DC motors. This propulsion system can be used for light icebreaking. 
On the other hand, there are three gas turbines. Each turbine can generate 20 to 25,000 horsepower, which is transferred to the shafts via large reduction gears. The gas turbine transmission system can generate 60 to 75,000 horsepower, which is used for heavy ice breaking. What a fog bow! Well, I'm not swearing. I'm talking about that fog bow over there. It's like a rainbow, but with fog. And because the fog droplets are so much smaller than rain droplets, it looks white instead of being multicolored. Maybe fog bow should be a swear word. But what allows icebreakers to break through thick ice is how they use all that power. Many icebreakers feature a distinctive spoon-shaped bow which is built with a toughened hull and internal frame. The curved bow allows the icebreaker to slide and ride up on the thick ice, and then the ship's enormous weight cracks through it. The portion of the hull designed to break the ice is one and three quarters inch thick in the bow and the stern sections, which is two to three times thicker than the hull of a commercial ship. Modern icebreaker hulls are also coated with a slippery layer of resin to reduce friction with the ice. A really neat feature of Polar Star's propellers is that they have controllable pitch. So while the shaft continues to turn in the same direction, by changing the pitch of the propellers, the power and direction of thrust generated by the propellers can be changed dynamically. Icebreakers mostly operate independently and in remote areas, which necessitates the need to have redundant systems to ensure their survivability in case of damages caused by fire, flooding, or other accidents. This is partly why Polar Star has two independent propulsion systems. Frequent inspection and maintenance of equipment can also mitigate some of the risks, but it's also crucial that the crew are always ready to deal with emergencies. Believe it or not, one of the biggest concerns at sea is fire. Due to the high volume of fuel and numerous heat sources, the engineering spaces on the ship are one of the biggest fire concerns. It's not like you can call 911 and evacuate the ship, so the fires need to be dealt with quickly and effectively. And for this reason, there are pre-scripted responses to all possible emergency scenarios and the crew undergo emergency drills on a regular basis. In fact, in August of 2020, US icebreaker Healy suffered from a fire. No injuries were reported, and the fire was put out in less than 30 minutes. But the damages were enough for Healy's Arctic mission to be cancelled. What we discussed so far is how the United States has chosen to utilize its icebreakers, mostly to support its scientific initiatives. But when it comes to Russia, things are a little different. First of all, they have polar cruises. That's right, for $50,000, you can get a suite on an icebreaker and go on a two-week cruise to the North Pole. But that's just the perk of having such a large fleet of icebreakers. Russia's coastline accounts for 53% of Arctic Ocean coastline, where by some estimates, there's upwards of $35 trillion of untapped gas, oil, and other natural resources. The nearby northern sea route can support extraction and shipping of those resources, and icebreakers will be in the center of all that activity. Even though the transit in the eastern Arctic usually ends in November, due to climate change and with the help of a large fleet of icebreakers, it could become accessible all year round, simplifying the delivery of oil and gas products to Southeast Asia by connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans via the Arctic. Since the early 2000s, the United States focus has been elsewhere, and what a fog bow that was. Let's just say their focus has not been on the Arctic, while Russia has been heavily investing in its fleet of icebreakers and supporting vessels. The US Coast Guard has some catching up to do, which could be why they plan to build at least three new heavy icebreakers, first of which is anticipated to arrive in 2024. In the meantime, at St. Petersburg's historic Baltic shipyard, hundreds of workers continue to work on building four nuclear-powered icebreakers. Looking for a VPN that works in the North Pole? Try NordVPN, risk-free with 30-day money-back guarantee. Use the link in the description. It will help our channel and the penguin who lost his keys.